uh, hoping you're having a good time. Uh, we're, so as Eric said, we're here to talk a bit about Crystal. Uh, I don't know if most of you have heard of it or not. It's a pretty new language, but it's also fun. Uh, before we get into Crystal, a little bit more about me really fast. So this is me. This is my handle pretty much everywhere if you want to find me. Uh, this is a company I, I work for called Savisual in Braga. They were kind enough to get me here, so thanks to them. Uh, as Eric said, RubyConf Portugal uh, is happening uh, in a month. Uh, it, we're having a pretty good lineup. Okay, so Abdegrim, Koishi, Sean Griffin, Klabnik, uh, among others. Uh, PJ that spoke yesterday at RubyConf is going to be the MC. So the venue is fabulous. You should definitely think about going. Also, we're having a, a raffle. Sometime today it should be announced. Uh, and we are giving away a free ticket for someone here. So please be excited about that. Now, Crystal. Uh, OK. So Crystal is an uh, efficient Ruby-like language. OK, so really fast and syntax similar to Ruby. We're going to see more about it in a while. Uh, one of the different things about Crystal is that it is compiled, so and it, it is uh, more strongly typed than, than Ruby. So and it also has uh, static checks, which brings some more safety than Ruby does. Uh, it also has very simple C bindings, which is nice for uh, a lot of reasons that we might discuss uh, in a while as well. Uh, another very cool thing about Crystal is that it's 100% self-hosted. That that means that um, it's all crystal is crystal. So if you understand the, the, the syntax, which is, again, very should be familiar to you if you know Ruby, it's very easy to just dig into the parser, the lexer, into the core of the language and just contribute, which is also very nice. Um, as I said, crystal is a typed language, okay? uh, but it does have a very good type uh, inference. So you kind of all the time it feels like you're writing Ruby and not worrying too much about types if you don't want to, which you probably will want to if you start writing uh, typed code. Um, but that means that you can set your variables just as you would in, a, in Ruby, right? So you have a, a number that's uh, a 42, so it's a, an integer, or a, a fixed number that would be the, the equivalent in Ruby. In Crystal it's called in 32, but it just works as you would expect it to work in, in Ruby. Uh, you can do the same thing with arrays, okay? So you have an array of numbers, you can append to it, again, same syntax as Ruby. But uh, now uh, the first small difference between Crystal and Ruby, if you check the class, it's not, not just array, okay? It's an array of ints, uh, so we, an array of integers. This is a, a bit different and this is gonna be important in a while. So here. If this was Ruby, you would expect it to work, right? So you have an array, you append uh, an array of integers, you append an integer, then you append a string, and you get the class. What could possibly go wrong, right? Well, in Crystal, it does not work. And it, it, what this, error, this is the error it's going to give you at compile time, OK? So this happens, the, the program will not even run. And what, what's it telling you is that uh, you cannot append a string to an array of integers, OK? So this is what it's telling you. In Crystal, uh, the, type of, um, the type inference system works when you're setting the variable. So you set an array of integers. You cannot then say, oh, but I want a string as well. That is not safe. Crystal will not let you do that. However, this is pretty easy to fix. Uh, one of the ways would be to just created an array that has integers and a string, then Crystal will know. Okay, so you can see here then the type is not array of ints anymore. It's an array of this little strange thing, which is a union type, which are very important in Crystal. This means that the array can either have strings or integers, okay? And you can have more uh, types as well. Of course, this is not always the best way of initializing an array. You don't want to have uh, elements with all the types uh, you need in the, in the array. So you can also do, uh, do this. Okay? You can say that's an array of strings or ints, and it will work just fine as well. Uh, now that we know a bit more about how types work in, system, uh, in Crystal, and uh, the most important part here 
Uh, remember is the union type. Okay, that's, the, I think, the most different thing. Um, but there's a lot that Crystal can do for you at compile time now. For instance, let's look at this Ruby example. Very simple method called string size. It takes a string and prints the length of the string. If you then try to call it uh, to different, uh, in two different places, if you run this code, you'll get 16. That's the length of that, that string. And then, boom. Okay. So you have an error. Undefined method length for nil. If you've been coding Ruby for a while, you probably have seen a lot of uh, similar errors. And uh, this is, uh, the problem here is not the actual error, uh, I think. The problem is that it happens in, in runtime. Okay? So you might only find out when uh, you're already running, you already have deployed this code. Or if you have a, a, a very strong um, test suite, you might catch it early, hopefully. But you never really know. Uh, in Crystal, if we take like the exact same uh, code, uh, it doesn't have the, the prints there, but imagine it does, um, you'd get a very similar error, error saying that length is not defined for nil. OK, that we expect that. However, this, er this error happens at compile time, not run time. Okay? So the, the program won't even run. It will tell you there's, a, there's a nil, uh, a, an undefined method for nil before it even runs. So that problem is uh, solved. Now let, let's take a look at a, a bit more complex example, taking the, the same example from before, the array of strings and ints. And um, let's go over what it's doing here. So we have an, uh, an array of ints. It takes an, array, sorry, an array of strings or ints, and it, we, we append an int and then a string. We take the array, we call the, we get the and, uh, and then we ask for the size of that element. Uh, if, you do, if you don't know it, size is only available for strings, not for ints. Okay? And, uh, but this should work in Ruby, right? Because the, the last element is a string. It has this, the size method, duct typing and everything. It should work. Uh, in Crystal, it doesn't. Okay? We get uh, undefined method size for ints. This is because uh, Crystal makes sure that any method you call on an element of the array must be valid for all the types in the union type of the array. Okay? So it's really safe that way, because it cannot really make sure that you're not messing it up along the way. So if, you, if you're doing something that can pot potentially introduce a bug, uh, it will uh, not let you run the, the program. C bindings. As I said, like, Crystal has a very good integration with C. Um, this is because Crystal is, uh, uh, compiles to LLVM bytecode. So it's really easy to integrate with C. It's, it's going to be very similar. Uh, but if you ever try to do it to, have tried to do it with Ruby, you might have noticed that it's not that easy, not very easy to get started anyway. Uh, you, Probably you will need to write some C, and worse than that, uh, you'd need to learn like Ruby syntax or Ruby C impl implementation, like the RB and its and all that. Um, basically, it's a bit of a pain. Uh, I think like, Fiddle uh, is something that's happening, and it looks nice. I think we have a, a talk tomorrow uh, about Fiddle. I haven't given it a, a, a close look, but it, it looks better, I think. But in Crystal, it's, it's already very simple to integrate with C. For instance, let's say you want to have the A2I uh, function that from the standard uh, library, standard C library. That's it. You just say that you want to use libc. You declare the header of the function, and you can use it under the libc namespace. OK, this is a bit cheating, because libc is already in the core. So you can just use it. Uh, however, if we wanted uh, like a random C library we, we needed to use, it would be a bit trickier, like one line extra. Uh, you have to call that link on top. For instance, if we need the read line, this is an example of using the read line C library. And you just need to link it and declare a header again. That's the function for read line. And then we have a code just using read line. This would 
prompt for a name, you can give it a name and it will print it as a string. The small like difference you, you have to note, note here is the string.new. That's because if you, if you also notice on the header, we're saying that the return value, that's what's coming uh, after the, the, the colon there. So the pointer u int. So we get a pointer back. And uh, so we have to cast it to a string. So we can use it as a regular string. But other than that, it's very, very simple to use. And uh, most of the core of Crystal actually uses this uh, for a lot of, of reasons. Some, some, uh, some of the parts of the code they didn't yet have time to rewrite. So we can, you can just leverage a lot of what the C community has done, which is a much bigger community than, community than what Crystal is right now. Um, another important part of, of Crystal uh, are something called generics that uh, we don't really have in Ruby, but there are in other languages. And the, the idea is that let's take this Ruby code. This is a full class, very simple class. You have a, a not a reader with a value, and you have an initializer that takes a value. So very, very simple class. And then we use it. Okay, we create a the we uh, create an instance of the class with an integer, and we get the absolute value of the, for the for that uh, for that integer. We get one. Fine. Then we create another instance with a, a char, and we get the ASCII code for that char. Fine, it works well, no problem there. Everything in, in Ruby just, just works. However, if you try the same exact thing in uh, Crystal, minus the slight differences in the syntax, which uh, we don't have the at reader, it's called getter, and you have the setter and property for the at accessor. So it, but it's very similar. And we have the coffee script like, like initializer. We don't have to set the the value and like repeat yourself three times. You can just do it once. But then if we try to do the same exact code, create a foo for int, then a foo for char, and call uh, different uh, methods on it, on different instances, it won't work. Okay? We get the similar error to what we had before. We have an undefined method, abs for char. Why is this? This is because of how, again, how type inference works in Crystal. Crystal needs to find a, a type for this value, right? You're not saying what the type of the value is, of the value variable. The way Crystal does it is it goes through every, every place where you initialize this class, and it sees the, the types. So here's an integer, here's a, here's a char. So what's the type of value? Well, it's a union of ints and chars. Okay? So this won't work because it's not available for chars. Also, again, this is a compile time error, so this won't even run. You can fix it pretty easily by having some, something called generics. So you can say this is a foo of t, of type t, like a generic type. And you say that that t is going to be defined by the type of the value. What this is telling Crystal is that each instance of foo can have a different type, a type t that is defined when we initialize it and is defined by the type of the value. So in this situation, this instance of foo will be a foo of int, and this instance of foo will be a foo of shards. And then it will just work again like it works uh, in Ruby. So this is how arrays are implemented. This is how hashes are implemented. So each instance of an array can have its own type, and it can be a union type. Okay? So we, we saw arrays that had integers and, sh and strings. So those are arrays of union types. However, we do not have an array uh, with all the types that we use in all arrays. So that would be a mess. Another difference between Crystal and Ruby that I find really interesting is that you, can, you have method overloading. And uh, if you're not familiar with method overloading, basically it means that you can define the same method over and over again, number of uh, arguments. So the IRT, if it has a different number of arguments, it's a different method. If it has different types, even though it has the same number of arguments, it's a different method. What in, in Crystal uh, we call uh, like the yieldness of a, of a method. So if a method yields to a block, then it's, a, it's different. Even though if it might have the same number of arguments and the same types, if it yields and another method doesn't, they are different. 
what this means is that we can, you can do something like this. Okay? So, of course, this is biased towards the, the Crystal implementation, but you can see the same thing written in Ruby and in Crystal. So you, you have a sum uh, method that can take different number of arguments. It can take different types of arguments, so you can pass it in strings or integers, and it will just work. In Crystal, it's very easy. Okay? So it's one line per method, and you just do everything on the header of the, of the method definition. In Ruby, you have to get everything and then do it inside of the method. So this is, I think, an, an inter interesting thing and uh, would be nice to have in Ruby. Okay, last part of, uh, of my talk is starting, and uh, it's uh, about shards. So what are shards? Shards is the name we, we've got for gems in, in Crystal. Okay, so if you build a library in Crystal, for now at least it's called shard. And uh, how does like, dependency management work? For now, and again, Crystal is a very new language that's evolving a lot. So the, um, the project, uh, the dependency system is not great yet, but the way it works right now is that you need to have a, a file called project file, similar to the gem file, has its own DSL, you say depths, and then you see there you can get uh, a library from GitHub, as long as the library is well uh, built. Uh, the, th the thing about Crystal, though, uh, oh, and then you can just use it, like you can require it and use it. The thing about like, the dependency system as it is right now is that, and probably how it will be, is that it only works uh, on GitHub and Bitbucket and all that, but the idea is that it's a decentralized system, so there's no Ruby gems, there's no place where you have all the meta information. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna be like like that forever, but right now it is. There's a lot of uh, there's a side project called Shards going on that's trying to build a better dependency management system, and uh, which are hard uh, if you have have tried to do one. And uh, so not really set in stone how this works, but the the idea of the of the creators of the language is to to make it decentralized. So you just have. You have a repo on GitHub, a repo on Bitbucket, you just use it. There's no central place where everything is. Uh, this is all fun and, and nice, but it makes discoverability really hard. Because you, you can just you can use uh, Ruby gems and just search for a gem, for instance. Um, and you cannot do that in Crystal because there's no central place. You could search in GitHub, uh, but that's uh, more painful. So there's a website called Crystal shards, and uh, you can look at uh, shards in different orders. Like you can see the ones that have more stars, so you can see the more more popular shards. You can see the ones that have been more recently updated, the ones that have more forks. You can see a lot of stuff here, and uh, this works for now at least, just because there are not that many. You can see like 180 shards, so that's not a lot. But uh, it's growing. It's growing. Like in maybe two months or three months, you got from 60 to 180 or something. So it's a community that's thriving right now. So a very, very good time to come to, to the community. And uh, I like to stress that, that there's a lot of opportunities if you like to contribute to open source or you want to start contributing to, to, contributing to open source. Because there's a lot of stuff that is not done in Crystal. So even in the language, in the core of the language, you can contribute to that. That's, there's a lot of stuff to do there. But even in, if you want to build libraries to do stuff, for instance, uh, maybe th six months ago, there was no Postgres adapter. So someone started building it. But there's a MySQL adapter now as well. So there's a lot of here you, you can do if, if you like and that kind of stuff. Uh, OK, now I'm going to do a really quick demo and try not to blow too much things. Uh, let's see if we can do this. Oh, I have a mirror display and here. Okay, is it the font? Is the font good enough? Can you see it there? Okay, so I have here uh, a Fibonacci sequence uh, generator. Okay, very simple, a recursive one. It's very simple and it's written in Ruby, and it just it's printing the, the element uh, number 40 of the sequences. So it generates the sequence and it gets the 40th uh, element and it prints it. Okay. 
So very simple code. It should work just fine. If we do it in Ruby, you have to wait a while. Not too much, hopefully. About know, some time. <laughs> OK, it worked. I forgot to put the time here. Let's do it again. <laughs> we have some time. Uh, it should be about eight seconds, if I'm not mistaken. Or it might be taking longer, because I'm not plugged in. OK, nine seconds. So this is uh, the Ruby implementation, OK? And uh, if you notice, it's the 40th. If you try to do like the 45th, uh, you might just grab a share and wait, because it's going to take a while. Uh, in Crystal, we can try it. Uh, okay. We can just pass in, uh, in this particular instance, because the, it's a, such a simple uh, program that the code is exact, the exact same in Crystal. So you can just pass it in a Ruby file, and it will just work. And OK, it took one second. However, what we are doing here is that we are compiling the program and then running it. So we can compile it first. So you can do crystal build. That will compile your, your file. And you also have a release uh, flag that makes it even faster. So we compile it, and then we can time it. Boom, 0 0.2 seconds. Okay. And it does the same thing. If you notice, like, it generates. Uh, it's here. So, and it took the same code. So it's very, very fast, especially for CPU-bound um, programs. You can almost write Ruby and make it like super fast. So please uh, try some Crystal, and uh, hopefully you can get we can get some of you to the community. That would be great. Uh, I, another thing that uh, I can mention that is super fast in Crystal is JSON parsing. So if you have a lot of that, Crystal is super, super fast at doing that as well. It has even some like a uh, small DSL that lets you define the structure of your JSON, and it's super fast at parsing that. So that's a very good use case to start using Crystal if you have one, if you have that problem. Okay, that's it. Thank you. So I will be do the be doing the question moderation. Ah, oh, there's someone standing already. Great. Luis, thank you. Um, personally, I had the impression that the type uh, system looked like the one used by the ML language. Where does uh, Crystal draw its inspiration for the type? Oh, uh, so uh, I have to re repeat the question, right? Or, or it has? Okay. So wh why is, uh, where does the type language, uh, the type system come from in Crystal? Uh, to be honest, I'm not really sure. Uh, so, but it, it takes a lot of inspiration from a lot of languages. I know it t takes inspiration from, from Ruby, obviously. From CoffeeScript, it takes some inspiration. Uh, from uh, Elixir, it takes some inspiration. Maybe from there, it got kind of a bit of a, the type system. I know the, the um, creators of the language are really going around like, to conferences and talking to people about uh, new ways to do languages. Um, it has uh, it also a thing I didn't mention here, but Crystal has a macro system, so it can get uh, you can do some fancy stuff at compile time, uh, and it also takes that from other languages. So there, there's a obviously it's a it's a new language, so it, it takes a lot of from other languages. Not I don't know for sure what comes from which language. Any other questions? One at the back there. Come here. I meet you halfway. Thanks. Uh, just a short uh, question. It looks really great. I have a question. Do you have a community code of conduct for your developers? Sorry? I have a question. If you have a community code of conduct for your developers, and do you have a core team, and what's the gender distribution? Sorry, Thanks. I didn't understand the question. Sorry. Um, Could you repeat? Do you have a code of conduct, a community oh. code of conduct, and do you have a core team, and um, how does the gender distribution Oh, okay. 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 Thanks. So yeah, th there's a car team. I'm not on the car team, but I, I do help. And um, I don't think there's a kind of conduct actually, or if it is, it's pretty recent. Uh, as far as distribution goes, it's uh, pretty bad. So uh, sorry, the diversity uh, distribution of uh, it's it's can can you hear me? Yeah, it's it's mostly guys. So. But please join. We, we, we will 
I think the, for sure. Uh, so if you want, there's a lot of, uh, of women here, so please join. We're, the community is very, is, is very friendly, I think, to, to everyone and very welcoming. It's just, it's just a small community and just happen to be that, that way. There's, I don't think there's any like bias towards a, any particular. So it's a very young language and there, there needs yeah, to be a lot of work, so this is one of them. Any other? There you go. Uh, you mentioned it's a young language. Is, do the creators consider it production ready? Sorry, the creators? Do they, is it considered production ready? Oh, production ready. Um, that's a good question. So it's not 1.0 1, 1 yet, so it's not 100% stable. But I think it is ready like for small uh, things. Like I was saying, like if you want to parse JSON, uh, you have like a microservice that parses JSON, ready for that. To build like a whole app in Crystal, probably not a good idea yet. Um, also because you don't have a lot of frame. You, ha you have some frameworks now that are starting to, to be built, but very, very, very early stage. Everything is very early stage. So if, to do small scripts and to do a small uh, subset of things, awesome. Uh, actually, like Crystal Shards is built on Crystal, and it has been running for a couple of months. So it does work, but um, I wouldn't advise it to build like your business on top of it yet. So please don't do that yet. Good point. One more question. Um, are there some uh, known limitations in meta programming? Uh, things where you can say from the beginning uh, this will never work in Crystal compared to mm -hmm. Ruby, mm -hmm. uh, just because of its concept. Uh, well, there's like eval, stuff like that. Uh, some of the, not all, but some of the metaprogramming thing you can do in, in Ruby because uh, Crystal needs to, like, can only take information that it has at compile time. So anything that you need uh, runtime information to be able to do, it won't work. Like, for instance, there is a method missing in, uh, in Crystal, but it's limited compared to. Uh, the Ruby method missing, you cannot do everything Ruby method missing does. Programming um, is not as powerful as Ruby is. I think that's the main thing. Thank you, Luis. Thanks.